right, good morning. Hopefully everyone's having an amazing day today. An amazing day, I just did. And I, now I'm gonna cap it off with a, let's call it a beautiful scenic drive and, and share with you an amazing FSD experience. Now I'm in a shopping center and I know, <laughs> I, I know that FSD is not gonna be its best in this type of setting, why? Because there's stop signs right on the ground. But let's see, because I have two more stop signs left. So let's see what happens. Oh, let's see if this thing can navigate me out of this shopping center. Now I cheated because I, I went further, but like that sign that's on, that it just stopped at right now, is a stop sign on the floor and it tried to make a right, but that wasn't the appropriate right. This is the right that it should be making. So let me see if I activate it from here, what will happen, okay? It stops. Now make this right turn without curbing my rims or getting me killed. And it did. Woohoo! What an awesome start. Semi start to, to the weekend. Um, now, in one of my previous videos, someone identified there was a Kia EV6 to the right over there, right? That's a that's a Kia dealership, and that was absolutely correct. And I noticed it. Uh, and I didn't realize the significance, right? So there is a supply chain challenge occurring across the, the world with EVs. And Kia somehow has EV6s in the Falls Church area. So if you're trying to get an EV, come scoop one up. I looked at it, you know, I think at a car show a couple months ago. And I thought it was a very beautiful vehicle. Um, but yeah. It is a beautiful vehicle, and uh, if you're looking for an electric vehicle, come scoop that beast up. Um, but yeah, so now I'm trying to go to Georgetown, and you know, it always takes a, the same route. Sometimes it doesn't take the same route, actually, but it actually it also depends on the version of FSD Beta, it seems like, in regards to what route it will take. This should be the same route that you all have probably seen between 10.10.2 and 10.11. I think I have a theory that there's some type of improvement capability occurring. I say capability, again, in the machine learning world, right? We have this thing called reinforcement learning. And I think I said it last time in the context of reinforcement learning, I saw in one of Tesla's previous presentations, there was a discussion about reinforcement learning for simulation environments not in real world unless they're doing it on the slide okay so this is where it messed up last time where it went straight but now I guess because there was a car in front of me that slowed it down it got on the right lane to make the left turn so that was good much better than before in other words what's making it get better I don't know but it reacted perfectly to that vehicle in front of us and it's doing this turn as intended or as it should do it. Fantastic. So then the question is, is it getting better? I don't know, right? This is the third time I've taken this path within the 10.10 dot, you know, 10, within the 10 dot series of versioning. Um, and you could say it's gotten better. And I would agree with you partially, right? Because it has kind of gotten better. Like, look, it's just, doing what it should do, right? It stopped at the light, and then when, right, you can make a right on red, so it made the right on the red. It waited for the pedestrians to go and then made the right on the red. So is it getting better? <laughs> the answer at this point is yes. It is getting better within the software version. So the question is, how is that possible? How is it possible for the software to get better within the same version, right? You know, I, I have several theories, right? So one is inputs drive outputs, right? So in this case, it might just be the perfect inputs were in place to enable this, this, this version or this model right within 10.11 to be performance the way it is today, right? It is possible that Again, just the right amount of inputs enabled it to be performant today. And I, I partially agree with that theory. The second theory I have is that Tesla, okay, good, there's another problem. So this lane is left only. 
and there's all kinds of glares. I don't know if this vehicle saw that, but this is left only. But it's done this in the past. It'll get on this lane and then kind of go forward, which it only gets problematic when there's a car next to you. When there's not a car next to you, it's fine. But it's something to note, right? And I'm just looking behind me just to make sure I didn't just make that up. But yes, it is a left only lane. Anyway, so so theory one, the right amount of inputs right drive the the you know the right inputs will drive the right outputs. So does it mean that again this this might be you know back to that that first that first theory? It might be the case that you know that's that's our job as beta test testers, right? Is that every time you know within a given area if something goes wrong that we just click that snapshot button and that snapshot button is a feedback loop to the engineers and then the engineers take our feedback and turn it into more performant models right so so that that might be the the way it might be getting better right because again it seems like so so again right inputs the right right outputs theory one theory two so Tesla might be updating certain aspects of their model without full software updates. That's my second theory. Okay? And that would make sense, but I can only prove that if I'm monitoring my network traffic as far as what my vehicle's downloading. Ooh, here we go. Problem area. Ha <laughs> ha! This was a problem area in the past. I haven't taken this path in a while. So let's see what happens. But anyway, so is it possible that Tesla is doing spot updates based upon our snapshots as beta testers? Maybe. In fact, it's probably a high likelihood that that is the, what is potentially making these things better. Yeah, like I need to make a left. I'm on this lane and straight only. Watch it try to make this left and it's probably going to mess up. So I let it mess up on purpose. It was supposed to make that left. Because the one thing I praised beta about is its ability to recover from an issue. So this is a problem. Let's see how this thing is gonna, or maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe I am wrong. Maybe it did go need to go straight, which it just, so maybe I'm the problem. Anyway, I'm probably the problem, yes. And yes, that was the right path to take for the vehicle that it took, and I was wrong. Back to my theories. So is Tesla doing spot updates? Very probable, right? Because it's very possible that they've set up something where Again, based upon the feedback loop between certain drivers in certain regions, they send updates to their models and their scripts or code within their 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 their, their software de deployment platform that address um, issues. Okay, so that is possible. The second option is that they are deploying some type of reinforcement learning model in shadow mode. And it's also possible that that reinforcement model might be updating their production size live model while the vehicle is driving. Right. So when I say model, you can think about it as the as the piece of code that's driving the vehicle, or that's that's detecting things and detecting objects. The code that's detecting objects and outputting bounding boxes and, and parameters of the environment. Right, my theory is that there's two, not even a theory, it's a fact. Tesla said they run some code in, in shadow mode and then they run some code in, in, in production in, within their FSD chips, right? So one, one, one core, let's call it, of the chip, one sector of the chip will run um, the shadow mode, the other sector would run production. So is it, it's, in my mind, yes, I could conceivably imagine that a, 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 a software environment where you have a um, a model, a machine learning model in shadow mode that is a reinforcement learning based model that right that uh, is deployed to react it's not react really learn from from responses that vary based upon Again, the, the logic of, of, not the logic, but the, let's call it the parameters of the model, right? So, so let's say I'm driving now and the, the RL variant is, is also driving in, in, in a shadow state. And then I take over or I press that snapshot button. And then what happens is that the shadow state model 
sees variation and then it somehow meaning they have some type of reward function built in that would change certain characteristics Ooh, what was that noise about for collision warning don't know why yeah so it's a possible it's a possibility right i haven't even thought about it too deeply i'm just kind of having thoughts out loud but yeah it could be and then right so so option one is stated you know the inputs are there's just different inputs that derive different outputs option two tesla's doing spot updates based upon feedback where their labelers are probably looking at the feedback and then updating the models and then option three is reinforcement learning is at play within the vehicle itself uh, obviously there's several other ways to do this problem those are my thoughts I'm probably completely wrong because these guys are, are magical right magical engineers I'm just one guy who has thoughts in public but yeah that's that's for consideration okay well I always love to see farmers markets right even though Actually, I love farmers markets. I think it's a good way to support the community, local community. I haven't been to any lately. I might come back to the one I just saw here at Falls Church. I don't think about it. I think there's one in DuPont Circle in DC that I think might be worth a visit maybe next weekend. We will see. Oh, also, uh, so. <laughs> The, the funny thing about owning Tesla, the thing that no one tells you about that you should probably 100% be aware of. I'm not saying buy Teslas, don't buy Teslas. You should buy a Tesla if you can afford it. In fact, you should buy just, you should buy a Tesla. I don't care which one, it's all the same. And I'm saying that out loud, unless, it, and really the difference is speed and, and, and size and range. But you should buy one, even if it's the cheapest one. The cheapest one is, is 50 times better than any other car I've ever owned. Um, in fact, I owned the cheapest one at one point. Right? Every time I look at them, I, I to me, they're all the same. Anyway, tires. Holy crap, tires. So, number one, there is a tire supply chain issue in the world right now that affects our ability to, to have tires in stock. When I say our, I'm talking about the nation. So when I bought this car, it came with the 21 inch variant. I was like, yes, 21 inches, looks good. I love it, arachnid, you know, RAR, you know, spider. I like it, you know? But then I was like, you know, I was, I was doing 100 mile trips a day. So my thought process was, man, 100 mile trips a day, it probably makes sense to be as efficient as possible versus you know, look good with your arachnid. <laughs> so I went to, I looked on the forums, I found another Model S owner who had a new Model S plaid or refresh, uh, long range. And I bought 19s off of them for about half the price of what they're sold on. Actually, no, I bought it on eBay, right? For somehow some company had these on eBay and they were about like either 19 or $2,000, which is exceptional because I think it's about $4,000 to buy these, these rims and tires on Tesla's website. So I don't know why it went to the right lane there. I just shifted it back to the left manually. Um, so I bought the 19 inches and I put them in the vehicle. And yes, I noticed a significant increase in efficiency versus the 21 inch, probably within the 20 to 10% range. Um, so then I was like, all right, I'm good. I used them in the winter time. Uh, they were summer tires. So in the winter time, they were completely ineffective, right? So thank goodness I had an all wheel drive. I was able to navigate through, you know, the little bit of winter that we had, but I probably should have had snow or all season tires. So that prompted me to say, okay, well, maybe I should have one set of tires with, uh, winter tires. And then the other set of tires with summer tires, sorry, the other set of wheels. So one set of wheels with winter one set of wheels with summer because that's what it seems like people do in this country so i i did i started pricing these things out right and then i was like all right where do i buy this from tire you know discount tire tire rack all sold out back order you can't buy all four at the same time it was quite the expedition uh the the learning experience 
And then the price point, there is a significant price point difference between 19 inch rims, wheels, or excuse me, tires, and 21 inch tires. Again, Tesla owners, right? 19 versus 20, wheels, right? Rims, uh, tires, like that is a thing on 19 versus 21. So then I said, okay, you know what? Let me, let me buy all seasons for the 19s because that will give me flexibility. I did that. And then, so I bought all seasons from uh, Tire Rack. I would say between uh, January and February, completely sold out, so I couldn't really get them. And then they started showing up for inventory in March, so I ordered four for the 19-inch variant rims, or oh, wheels, excuse me. And then, I put on my 21s, because I was like, it's summertime, I want that look, you know, arachnid all the way. A week later, boom, got a, issue on the sidewall I think I ran over a nail on the sidewall couldn't be repaired right and during that day at first I didn't know there was an issue I just saw my tire pressure going down so I brought one of my air compressors that was battery operated with me and I would pump it up it would go down I would pump it up and go down I'm like okay I need to get this fixed went to a local tire shop said hey can you fix it they said hey you have you know sidewall damage we can't fix it you need to buy a new one I said do you have tires in stock no I said okay I'm kind of screwed so then I had to like rent a car to go home, pick up the uh, 21 inch to put, correction, to pick up the 19 inch to put on the vehicle to replace the 21 inch. When I, um, good job vehicle. So it was kind of a crapshoot because at the time all rental cars were sold out in the area. This was like last week, right? Because being in the, you know, national capital area, right? Like DC, Maryland, Virginia, there's airports everywhere. so. There's times where like all the all rental cars were sold out because people fly in here and they just happened to be those times. So luckily I had family in the area. They went home, picked up the 19 inches, brought them to the tire shop and we switched them out. Moral of the story, holy crap, you need either extra tires or extra wheels if you're a Tesla user and you need to think ahead and buy extra tires, uh, sorry, and, and keep them at home just in case something happens. Because if you don't do that, you might be screwed without tires and I've heard of Tesla owners who have left their vehicle at Tesla for several weeks until Tesla had the tires in stock. It's no one's fault, right? It is a supply supply chain issue. Well, it's probably, there are people at fault at this, right? But it's just a general for, uh, supply chain issue. Um, and so luckily, thank goodness I had those two, two sets of wheels and I could switch. And I think my way ahead is, I've been looking at this Nokian uh, High Papa, Papa Kalita, something like that, Nokian winter tires. So apparently they are awesome. I saw some videos online, um, out of spec reviews, I think had a video where he was just crushing through the snow in his Model 3. So I'm gonna order those and they have an EV variant for my 19 inches. I think I'm gonna keep my 21 inches for the day I have to go, you know, I'm the day that I'm hungry for a different look, maybe switch to 21s and then immediately switch back to 19s <laughs> when I have to go back to work. <laughs> so it's more of a look thing. Uh, I'll play that game there, uh, which means I'm probably gonna be lazy and never put the 21 inches on until I need them. So, so note that. I'll let you all know if that actually ever happens. But uh, yeah, always have extra tires if you are, especially in this day and time, either extra tires or extra wheel with a different set of tires. Yes, it is expensive. I'm just I'm blessed to to have the opportunity to react in these types of uh, issues. Um, but yeah, it's always good to have extra tires and and have the right tires for the for the right weather condition from a safety side. I don't know why this vehicle just pulled up to the center like this. I'm just gonna accelerate. But no, it shouldn't have pulled up like that. All right, so I don't think this thing is gonna let me allow, allow for you all to see great video from Georgetown. So I, I really truly thank you all for joining me because I only have 1% battery left. Um, but hopefully you all were able to see some of the driving dynamics. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed. Did a really good job. And uh, yeah, look out for, for more content as, as we continue to test this beat out. Thank you. Take care. Bye.